Good afternoon. So what are we going to do today? Uh, we're going to build a simple um, REST API application and I'm going to do it using C Sharp and WinForms. Um, now, I'm using WinForms because it's a nice simple way to start off. Um, later on uh, in other videos I'll use MVC. But WinForms is a good place to start. We can keep things simple and keep it all contained within uh, a single project without branching out to the web or HTML or anything else. So just uh, to go through what, uh, basically I wrote this, so I'm going to include it with um, with the video as well, stick it on a link at the bottom. Um, but just to go through what uh, an API is, um, it's a way of accessing data that's held on a server. So what we can do, we can uh, we can use our client, we can set up our client, which we'll do today. That will then use uh, the, the the REST API um, uh, application, uh, and then it will access the data on the cloud. And the data will come through, and we'll then process it and, and try and make sense of it. Um, API, Application Programming Interface, I'm not going to read all of this, don't worry. Uh, and REST stands for representational, representational state transfer. Um, REST API, also known as a RESTful API, is an application program interface API or web API that conforms to the constraints of the REST architectural style and allows for interaction with RESTful web services. Uh, REST was created by computer scientist Roy Fielding. So uh, the one we're going to use today is this um, dummy rest api example.com i'll just show you what it looks like um, find find which web page i had it on here we are here we are here we are right okay so this is a uh, dummy rest api example uh, in order to find it if you just go into google um, and type in dummy REST API example, uh, don't look at the top one, it's the second one we want there, and uh, yeah, fairly easy to find. Um, it's got a number of URLs, a number of links, if we click the top one, that will take us to this data here. So we've got a, a whole load of, of data that's going to be returned, and essentially that's all we're doing. We're, we're going to use our application to um, click on this URL uh, the data will come through in this funny format and we'll get our application to to make some sense of it using an application called Postman um, that's something you can install but we'll come on to that later and what you can do you can add further arguments so for example this one here exactly the same link we've got number one in front of it and what this will do is it will simply take one record so if we have a look at the original We've got Tiger Nixon, 328,800. Uh, he's 61 years old and he doesn't have uh, an image uh, photograph. Um, if we have a look at our single one, then we can just see his single one. So by adding arguments, we can we can you know effectively change the data that we get out. So if you're writing a say a train application which is going to display the departures from a train station you could add in the particular train station name and you could add in the time and you could add in other things which will reduce the data you get out otherwise you just get hit with tons and tons of it so anyway, I, hope, I hope that makes a bit of sense um, I assume given the fact that you're looking at this video you've, you've got a vague idea about all that so let's uh, let's get stuck in let's give it a go so I'm going to open up Visual Studio which can sometimes be a bit slow on these machines. Sometimes. I'm going to create a new project. And the project is going to be of type forms. Now, as I said before, it's just a nice simple way of creating a project. Uh, a project template for creating a .NET Windows application with forms app. Um, I'm going to stick that here I think I'll probably need to create a folder for it um, uh, 
new folder, REST API. There we go, so we'll select that. It's called REST API. And um, we're going to use the dot so the .NET 6 framework. Um, currently speaking, that's the that's the most up to date. Okay, so that's being created. If you haven't seen a, a, a C Sharp WinForms application before. You've got your Solution Explorer up here. This shows you all of the files. This is the main one we're interested in. We've got the toolbox up here, which will be all of the objects that you can drag and drop onto the form. And then we've got the uh, uh, the properties window. So if you want to adjust aspects of a of a, a button or a, a box, then you can do that um, in the properties window. I'll demonstrate that now. It's going to be a very simple form. Uh, create a button on there. We'll call that BTN read because it's good. Oh, no, we won't get it the wrong way around. So the text property of the button is going to be read API because the text property is what appears on the button face. Um, we're also going to change the name to BTN read. So that's what we'll see in the code. And the only other thing I'm going to add to this is a list box. And I'm just going to leave it exactly as it is. So it's called list box one. And uh, we're sort of ready to go now. Now I'm going to slightly overcomplicate things. Um, I could just start throwing all the code into the form. And I, I think potentially that would be quite a useful video to do. But because this is only accessing one API, it's fine. But if you wanted to extend this and you wanted to access data from other places, I think perhaps a, a class library might be a good thing to create. And essentially we're going to put all of our data into, into one area and we can access it as and when we need to, sort of like a shared, um, a shared instruction manual, if you like. So here's our, here's our current project. And here's the solution name at the top, REST API. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to add a thing called a class library. So if I go down to add, it then gives me the option to add a new project. Now if you don't see new project, there's a chance that you've clicked on that second line. That's wrong. We don't want to do that. Very top line. So right click, add, um, new project. And then what we're going to search for in this box is a class library. Click on next. I'm going to be boring and call it class lib1. But you can worry about the names of these things later on. It's just, it's literally just a class library. So I'm going to call it class library. And later on, as you get better with all this stuff, you can, uh, you can change what you call these things. Anyway, I've now got uh, a different project in a different namespace which I will be able to uh, call up later on. Okay, so that's enough coding for a second. Um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go back to my website. So what I want to do is I want to uh, access Postman. And so to do that, we, we type in Postman online and we can sign up for free. Um, so if you go to sign up for free, um, I'm going to quick. I can't pause this video. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this off to one side, um, click sign in, and I'm going to try and sign in with my Google account. We'll see how that goes. Click on next. Uh, can't remember the password. So I'll try and guess that. Oh, it's wrong. Should have really practiced this beforehand. Hurrah. Okay, so I'm going to get a, a notification to my phone. Bear with me. So while all this is going on, you can, of course, uh, 
be signing in yourself. And here we are back in the room. Okay, so once you've signed in, you'll get um, you'll get something like this. Uh, what I want to do is start something new now. I appreciate that by the time you do this, you might see a slightly different screen layout, but it's somewhere in the middle for me. Hopefully, you'll be able to find wherever it is. So I'm going to click on Create New, and uh, what I want is um, a, a, an HTTP request. So I'll click on that. And I come to this form which asks me to enter the URL. Now the URL is what we got from here. So I'm going to copy that. This is from Dummy API. Go into uh, Postman, paste that in, and click Send. And what this does now, it goes across to um, uh, to, to the API and it reads in the data so this is all the data you can see it's, it's just laid out slightly better so this is the this is the original data you can see tiger nixon there with his his massive salary um and all it does is just lay it out so it looks a little bit nicer you could do it yourself you could do it manually um but what's the point so here we are pretty raw if we want to go back to the, the raw um etc so what I'm going to do, I'm going to control A with JSON highlighted, control A, control C, and that's all of the data copied. And now we're going to go back to our Visual Studio project and we're going to visit the class library. Okay, so just clicking on here, um, where it says public class class one, um, we'll keep that, we'll keep that, and we will do something which I find quite quite impressive. We click on edit. We're going to go to paste special. So, just a recap. I'm inside the public class class one. Um, I've created myself some space, and then it's edit, paste special, paste JSON as classes. And what that does that pastes in the format of our data. So we can uh, we can make some sense of it now it's not quite right yet um, so what I want to do is uh, I want to uh, first of all change my class one class one isn't very descriptive I want this to be my emp connection so I've, I've changed it to be emp connection um, and what else do I want? What else do I want? Let's have a look at this. That's looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. So we've got our public class M connection. Within there, we've got the uh, the root objects and the data num. Um, and we're we're looking good. We're looking good. So click on the class. So it's in class one. You can see that there. I think I had that highlighted before. Um, but this is the this is where the data actually is. Now this is important. This bit that must match the file name. So the minute it doesn't. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to right click this. I'm going to rename that as emp connection. There we are. So I've renamed that as emp connection, and. Uh, that's the complicated bit done. That's the complicated bit done. So that's our class built. You can see if you were going to use other um, other APIs, you could just put them all in here in a big long line, and then you can access them as and when you wish to. So we're going to go back to our original form now. So I'm going to close that, save it, close that save it even though I haven't changed it back to my form and I'm back in my form okay so in order to get this to work there's a few new get packages that we have to add now new get packages are, are a way to um, add functionality to your project without much pain um, they're very simple to do we click on tools at the top 
um, we click on NuGet Package Manager and then we manage NuGet Packages for Solution. It's got like a blue icon. Give it a second. So these are all the packages I've currently got installed in my application. None. Uh, what I want to do, I want to browse. So I'm going to click on Browse and I'm going to uh, look for two packages. First one I want is REST Sharp. So I type in REST Sharp there and it comes at the top. It's got like a sort of musical note theme about it. It's a simple REST and HTTP. That's great. Um, and I want those um, in everything. I'll just stick them in everything. Uh, click install. It then asks you uh, a few questions. Some of them longer than others. This doesn't look too bad. I can now see if I click if I click installed, we've got that installed, which is great. Um, there is another one that we need. Sort of glancing at my guidance notes, which I will include, and that's the uh, Newson uh, Newton Soft package. So I'm just going to go for Newton. There we go. Newton Soft dot JSON. It looks like a rocket. And um, there we go. Popular high performance JSON framework for .NET. And again, same thing. Make sure they're all highlighted. Click install. You can probably do it all at once. And there we go. So now we've got everything installed. OK. Uh, so all good all good if you want to double check that you can go to your dependencies packages and you can see them both in there as well so happy happy with that okay so let's close that window um, I'm going to click this button here and this will take me through to the code which will be run when we click the button um, Now, what do we need to do? Uh, first off, we need to make sure that we use those packages that we've just installed. So I'm going to go up to the top. I'm going to type in, uh, I've moved the namespace down, give myself some extra room, using, and I want rest sharp, using Newton Soft, which is the other one. And then I'm also want to use my class library. So that's this one here, class lib one. Don't worry about the fact that that's underlined. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that later. Um, what, what we have to do, we have to reference the class library project so that our code knows where to find it. Okay, so in here now, um, I want to create a global variable and this is going to be my emp connection again it won't find it dot root object and I'm going to call it result and this will store the result of the API Conversion. Okay, so we probably need to uh, get rid of some of these errors because what we're looking for here is is this, um, that, the root object, and um, we can't see it. So what we need to do, we need to right click on this, and we need to say that it's there. So I'm look highlighting the the project name which is in bold. Uh, I'm going to right click that, go down to add. And I'm going to add a project reference, and that's going to be a project reference to class lib1. It's the only one in the list, so nice and simple. That you can see adds it in into our, our program file. Um, I'm going to close that now, and I'm going to come back in here. Why is that still 
why is that still in error okay so quite often with with these things when you, when you get an error like this you can check it so I'm just going to write it in the next line I'll actually for m connection dot root object oh I see got a capital there um, and I've got a misspelling so right I won't I won't worry too much about this for a second what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, simply okay so m connection root object I think I called it result Okay, so error free, error free. So now we know what class lib1 is um, and we've used it. Um, we've managed to create a, a class, uh, an instance of the, the class, um, and we're all good. We're all good. So now a bit of code to add in. A bit of code. Um, actually, I, I want a little bit more than that. Um, I want to add the dot JSON element of that particular package that's important okay so I'm just going to type in a few more bits um, if you want lots more um, uh, comments download the download the form uh, that I'll put with this and, and that'll give you a few extra comments um, First things first, uh, I'm going to come into my, my BTN read um, and I'm going to outline what that should do. That's going to call a procedure called get data. So as we click that, we're going to call a procedure called get data. Um, let's type that now. I'll put that further down so that it's got a nice clear order. Uh, private void. Probably should make this code a little bit bigger so that you can see it. Private void. Private means it can only be seen within this script. Void means it's a procedure because it doesn't return anything. And it's called get data. There we go. So now that error is gone because we know where to go. Um, this will call the API. Um, it uses so it uses rest sharp which is what we called on on line one um, and the source that we're accessing is going to be HTTPS dummy these are all comments uh, dot rest example.com forward slash API forward slash v1 forward slash forward slash v1 forward slash employees um, okay so first things first we're going to set up the client so var client equals new rest client HTTPS. So I'll copy that because I've typed it once, haven't I? Now you'll notice I'm not going for the whole lot here. I'm not going for the whole lot. I'm only giving it the base address. That'll become clear soon. That'll become clear soon. So I'm only giving it the base address. Okay. The the next part of it, the employees bit, I'm going to add in here. So var request equals new rest request. You can see it's highlighted there, so I'm going to use double tab tab in order to, to put that in. And I'm going to send in the argument employees, which is the last bit. And now the var response is equal to the client execute request. 
Oh, not that. Don't want get execute request. Okay, so we're going to ex execute that request. Okay, so this is the uh, our request here is now ready to go, which I think is exciting. Um, if response dot status code is equal to system dot net dot http dot ok you can probably guess what that's asking so if we're all good then we're going to get our content string raw response is equal to response dot content Okay, so at this point, what we've got in here is, is what we call a raw response. What we've got in here now, if I can again find the right data, is this. That's what we've got in there, all of that. So that's now sitting in here. And you can, you can follow through this. You can use F11 and you can step through the code. Um, and you'll see, you'll see all of that. Now what we've got to do is we've got to make some sense of it. So, um, because we went to Postman and we managed to get all of that nicely formatted data from Postman here, we could then paste that in as a JSON class. JSON, what it does is it basically we, we, we get rid of all the re repetition and we end up with our, oh, with our class, which basically states the fields that are available. So these are all the fields uh, for each of our each of our bits of data, um, and now what we can do is we can use that to make use of it. So back into where I was, I'm jumping around all over the place. We've got the raw data. Okay, so we'll convert the raw data um, here. So result equal to JSON convert uh, dot deserialize <laughs> object clean <laughs> uh, has just walked in teach me for staying late at night m connection dot root object um, and then we want to take in that raw response. So we're deserializing the object. Uh, we're using the raw response. Um, if the result is equal to null, is not equal to null, sorry. So we've got some data. Then for each line that we have, We'll add it to our list box. List box one dot items dot add obj dot employee name. Now employee name is one of the fields. So if I go back to my emp connection, we can see employee name is in there. If you want to put any other data in there? You can. Basically, you could put the employee name followed by the employee age or whatever you like. Um, wouldn't be able to put that in there if it existed because obviously that's a picture and we'd have to handle that in a different way but you can put any of these fields in uh, without any problems so I'll just find out where I am again okay so this will stick put the emp name into the list box uh, and that's pretty much it that's pretty much it um, Let's give it a run, and fingers crossed it will it will all work. Um, who knows? Who knows? It's all very exciting, isn't it?
click on REST API here. I'm not using any particular fancy way of compiling. Okay, so here's my form. Click on REST API. It's off, it's running, it's doing something. Oh, tension. Can take a bit of time depending on how long it takes to come back. I'm either waiting for an error or I'm waiting for the data to come through. And I'm not seeing much at the minute. It does seem to have calmed down a bit, but I'm not particularly happy with that response sign. I think that could be a sign of things have gone awry. So let's stop it and we'll, we'll have a look. So I'll hover over my get data bus and basically what I've done there I've um, set a breakpoint by clicking that line. You can also do that by going down to breakpoint and choosing um, enable breakpoint. Um, and that will just stop my code there. So we can run that again. We can, uh, possible I've typed in the URL a bit wrong. But anyway, click on this now. And we're in. So F11. So we set up the, the link. I probably should have copied that. But anyway. So the client is now set. And we can have a look in there. And we can see... It looks quite good. That's set, that's set. If the status code is okay, now it looks as though the status code was zero, which is not equal to okay. Um, so I am imagining that's the problem. So let's have a quick look at our actual address and we'll make sure we've got that right back in here copy that when I do this because I want to check to see if I've got it right or, or wrong I'm gonna paste it in there and use the space bar there it does look wrong doesn't it I missed out the API bit so I'm gonna cut that bit there I worry about employees. Hopefully, I, I spelt that right. And we'll come back to that later. Um, and I'll also paste it into my comment. So that we've got everything there. Employees is now just lurking. I'm going to cut that there, paste that there. And now, because everything's gone a bit skew with, I'm going to tidy that up using Edit, Advanced, Format a Document, and that just tabs everything in again. Okay, so now I've got the uh, uh, URL correct. Let's try that again. Um, fingers crossed we'll get something. So in here, read the API. Fingers crossed. Hurrah! We've got everything that we need. So that's looking good. Now, what you can also do, if you're uh, keen to see it, is you can run the, the code, click the button, use a breakpoint and then F11 on your keyboard in order to step through and see what's happening at each stage. Now the bit, I think that's interesting, the bit I want, was hoping to show you there, oh it says too many requests, can you see that? So that isn't me this time, this is a, this is a problem from the API provider, so it's not happy that there's been too many requests. The bit I was hoping to show you is this the raw response i'll take that break point off we're going to stick another one on now i will quickly try it again stop it running stop it running and try it again and now hopefully we won't crash out Hurrah! So this has gone in properly now. We're, we're okay. F11. Again, I haven't changed anything. It was just because of the API was having a problem. And you can see the raw response is exactly that. It's raw data just coming in the normal way. This will convert it and make it all look pretty. 
Um, so we'll look at the result of that and we can see here ooh, just clicking through this and we can go through each individual person and we can see all of their data so there's the first one there's the second one etc so you can see how it's been structured um, so it's a, now a manageable object in C sharp anyway I think I've waffled on enough don't know how long this video is hopefully not too long but hopefully that's useful for you Hopefully that's useful for you. What I'm going to do, I'll, I'll upload the instructions along with this video. And I'll also uh, come back and we'll do a Spotify one um, within the next few days, maybe another week. And then we'll get on to um, uh, MySQL uh, SQL Server database things as well. Anyway, hopefully it was enjoyable. Do leave a comment. Do leave a comment. Uh, I'll try and get back to you if, you, uh, if I can. Uh, good luck. Bye-bye.